The floating head phenomenon is real and you need to get your dog used to it. Mary McKnight here with Service Dog Academy and Diabetic Alert Dog University. It is Monday, which means it's Medical Alert Dog Monday, where I answer your questions about medical alert dog training. Each week I come to you with a socialization item, and this week's socialization item is what I call the floating head phenomenon. <laughs> and what that is, is this is actually based on um, uh, experiences that I had at my dog training classes in Seattle. I literally had windows that were at the height, head height, and all uh, the dogs would see uh, just a head going by the window and they would all start barking. <laughs> so I called this the floating head phenomenon. And what it is is, you know, like you could see this in windows, you know, you just have people's heads floating by, or it could be like some kid is hiding behind a wall and pokes their head out. And all the dog sees is just a head. There's no body whatsoever. So it's definitely something you need to work on because kids do it a lot. They play peekaboo with your dog. Uh, and so just a head popping out of uh, somewhere with no body whatsoever can be scary for a dog. So it's important for you to get your dog used to this. And I guarantee you it's going to happen to you at some point. The floating head phenomenon is real and you need to get your dog used to it. Amelia from Cincinnati, Ohio has our question of the week. Amelia's daughter has been just diagnosed with POTS, which is posture orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And she wants to train her own medical alert dog. But she wants to know if her dog is legally allowed, once it's trained, to be uh, taken to school with her daughter. What you don't realize, Amelia, is that you have just opened up a gigantic can of worms, unfortunately. So uh, this question has a couple different answers, and it all depends on uh, where you are in your journey, and it needs to be taken into consideration. This, All of these answers need to be taken into, into consideration if you're going to think about bringing a dog into a school environment. So here's the deal. Technically, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is a federal law, your child is allowed to bring her task-trained service dog with her to school. But what you may not realize is that the answer is much more complex than uh, just what the federal law says. Because when you approach the subject with your school administration, you will probably not be dealing with administrators who understand or who are comfortable with even following the law. So, however, you may be, get incredibly lucky and have a school experience in which your administrators are super excited about having a service dog. And in the classroom environment, you may get that lucky. <laughs> if that happens to you, count yourself completely blessed. However, what you do need to consider, though, is if that does happen and you are training your own dog, this is a several-year journey that you're going to be taking with your dog when you're doing your training. And although administration, you know, two years ago said that you could bring your dog in, doesn't mean that the administration this year now says that you can bring your dog in because sometimes administrations change. People move, they take different jobs, they, you know, in the, in the, in the department, they, they, they move all over the place. And sometimes the administration that you work with two years ago is not the same administration that you're going to work with once your dog has been trained. So I would definitely recommend that you prepare for the possibility of a legal fight. Uh, because you um, will probably be stuck with uh, a school district that is not going to be accepting the fact that you want to bring your dog to school with your child. Unfortunately, just because the law says that your child is allowed to access the school environment with a task-trained service dog, it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to have to fight for that right. If you don't believe me, I would encourage you to Google this and uh, see how many stories, news stories, there's news stories all over the place about people having to literally fight for their right to get the access that is guaranteed to them by a federal law. So I just want to caution you, if you think bringing a service dog into a classroom environment is going to be easy, think again. Uh, be prepared to have a legal fight on your hands. Uh, this advice is especially true for younger children. The older your child is, the more likely that uh, the school district will be more willing to work with you. Um, you know, especially for young children, I've heard that you know school districts are asking their um, 
their students to pay for an aid to manage the dog if their child is is, is under a certain uh, you know age, or that they're requiring that they take out a million dollar uh, insurance policy on their dog just in case you know that the dog does something uh, in the school environment that hurts a student or staff. The other thing that you need to think about is that you never want to bring a dog into a school environment uh, with your child unless that dog has been highly trained to do so. So what you may not know is that if your dog has one single episode of barking at another person, uh, being disruptive in class, be behaving inappropriately, the administration has every legal right to ask you to never bring that dog back again and you don't have the right to fight that. So these are just a couple different things that you need to think about when it comes to bringing a service dog into a non-college classroom environment. There are many more issues that you're probably going to encounter when it comes to this difficult decision, and I highly recommend that you work in, with an experienced trainer uh, to help you navigate these, unfortunately, potentially treacherous waters. So what do you think of my answer? Do you think it's fair that parents have to think about fighting a school district in order to be able to br bring what is essentially a piece of medical equipment <laughs> to school with their child, leave a comment on our YouTube channel or on our website at servicedogacademy.com. I have a new medical alert dog class coming up here in the St. Louis area. It's actually being taught in Waterloo, Illinois, which is about 30 minutes away from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, the class is March 29th through April 1st, and there's actually another class coming to Seattle. So we are going to be teaching in Seattle uh, April 5th through the 8th and one near Boise, Idaho, uh, April 12th through the 15th. Uh, if you would like more information about these classes and find out how to enroll in them, please visit my website at servicedogacademy.com or diabeticalertdoguniversity.com. If you are interested in training your own medical alert dog in the comfort of your home, you can go to our online program called Diabetic Alert Dog University and watch the first video for free. If you have questions about purchasing or training a medical alert dog, please email me at mary at servicedogacademy.com and I will try to answer your question in next week's Medical Alert Dog Monday YouTube video. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to our both our YouTube channel and our email list. Uh, and then you'll be notified when we add new classes and add new videos and do maybe that uh, Google another Google Hangout where we can we teach things for free and allow you to ask questions. So if you're on our list, both our email list and our YouTube list, you're going to get notified when we do things like that. Do you want one-on-one -on -one time with me but can't attend one of my classes? That's all right. I can transcend space and time. Well, in reality, I can transcend location. That's about it. But uh, uh, we can use a program called Skype or we can FaceTime or we can uh, Google Hangout together. And uh, I can see you and you can see me and I can help you work through any problems that you're having with your medical alert dog or any ad address any questions that you have about medical alert dog training using this really cool technology. So... Um, you can book an appointment at servicedogacademy.com or diabeticalertduguniversity.com. I want to remind you that you can change your life with the use of a task-trained medical alert dog, and you can train that dog yourself. All it really takes is time, patience, a dog with the right temperament, and working with the right experienced trainer. I've trained 150 medical alert dogs for diabetes, migraines, narcolepsy, uh, AFib, and POTS, and other experimental alert dogs. So... You know, I want you to be able to succeed with this, and I want you to become part of the Service Dog Academy family, and I want to hear from you and hear about how your dog has saved your life. You can do this.